Hey, what's happening guys? Today we're going to build a little kit and it is this one, the Gumps Grocery ICL8038 Monolithic Function Signal Generator Kit. And the reason I bought this is because it is incredibly cheap, even from Amazon. Eight dollars. So for eight dollars, I mean, I, I realize the frequency range isn't that great, but we're going to talk about that in a minute. From 50 to 5 kilohertz would allow you to test pretty much any audio circuits you have. And the chip is going to be very useful. Um, it is a chip that has been superseded. I'm not sure what the current chip is, but these ICL 8038s are still very widely available. So once we build it, we're going to have something like this, and uh, it's going to be fun. So I'm going to go get the soldering stuff set up, and I'll bring you right back. All right, so here's the kit. It should be pretty simple. There's really not a lot to it. Here's our circuit board. Here's our IC. It's got a wee bent leg, but we can take care of that. So we're going to get everything set up here. And uh, this shouldn't take long at all. Okay, to get started, I've got all my parts nulled out over here. So we know where they're all at. And then we're going to measure the values of our resistors so that we know where they're at so that looks like a 200 ohm the one with the three resistors is like 10k so, I am going to mark those, just so we know what we're doing. And then we have this little pack with the four resistors, which are... ...32K. And I will mark those as well. Next, we need to deal with the bent leg on our IC. Just trying to give a little, little straighten in there. Then we'll put it in the chip straightener. Give it a squeeze. And everything is now lined up. We've also got a little bend on that guy. And we should be good. So what I was telling you earlier when we were looking at this on Amazon's website is that even though the range of this particular function generator is you know in the audio frequency zone the IC itself is capable of quite a bit more so all we would need to do would be to basically change the timing capacitor to get us a different range and anyway, here's what I'm thinking about doing I'm going to order some more of these chips, I think. We can recreate most of this circuit, but add in a switch, perhaps, or jumpers, to allow us to select different frequency ranges. That's my plan, anyway. If you guys want to see that, 
in a video, just let me know. So here's our uh, our single resistor. That is that 200 ohm. We'll put it in there. Then it needs a 10K. Which we'll put here. Again, I'm starting with the smallest components, the ones that are closest to the board. Now this is extremely low current. So... You don't have to worry about spacing your resistors off the board like you do with an amplifier or, you know, anything like that. I wouldn't worry about it too much. All right, so there's our first three resistors in place, and I'm pretty certain I don't have to. Yeah, I don't need any blue tack to hold them in place, but I've got blue tack ready just in case we do need it. So we'll get some of my favorite MG solder here. And we will solder these guys up. Something like this might be a little challenging to a first time builder. You could definitely do it. And if you like a challenge, you know, don't skip it because I said it's a little bit challenging. And the only reason I say that is because, you know, there are quite a few components here. Okay. But for anybody who's built a kit or two, this shouldn't be any problem at all. You should be able to go through something like this and taking your time, being careful, less than an hour for sure. All right, so I'm going to place the rest of the resistors. All right, as you can see, we've got all the resistors in. They're sitting there nice and flat. I even lined them all up for those of you with obsessive compulsive tendencies. Next, we'll throw in our diode making sure we align it properly and then there's a little capacitor one put in here see 104 102 103 I think it's these. Yep. There's a 104. So let's get those guys soldered up. This is a nicely constructed board. I had never heard of this company. Whoop, oh, pardon me. Gump's Grocery before, but uh, they have a lot of little low-cost kits on Amazon. So if they ask, oh, let me move the camera. If the kit ends up being halfway decent, I have no reason to suspect that it won't. Well, then... I'm going to order some more of these because they're fun and they're cheap. All right, let's do some more capacitors. There's another 104. Now, one of these is a 102, the other is a 103. And... I almost dropped them both. Yeah, what does this one say? 
That looks like two. Man, my eyes are so bad, I can't see this. Okay, that's a three. Good, so there's our... Three. And there's our two. Now I'll use some blue tack for these, because, you know, the legs are short. I don't really want to stress anything by, like, bending them, so... A little blue tack will hold them on there nicely. Can't believe all the years. I never used blue tack. Uh, electrical tape. Super glue. It really wasn't until I had started this channel. I started watching other electronics channels. I noticed a lot of the uh, the British electronics YouTubers were using this stuff, especially Julian Eilert and David. Um, oh shoot, David! I can't think of your last name. But they're the ones that kind of turned me on to this. And then, of course, it was good old Uncle Rob who sent me some and I got my first use of it and well then I was hooked whoever designed this did a really nice job making it all single sided alright so let's put in some trimmers there's our 20k that would be a 203 Two zero and three zeros. That's how you read that. Here's another one, one oh four. That's going to be a hundred K. That's a ten with four zeros after it. So one zero, there's your ten. Uh, another one makes it a hundred thousand, ten thousand, hundred thousand. Sweep these guys in here real nice. This kit is going together extremely easy. All of the footprints are well done. There's plenty of room. I'm not like stressing I'm going to get solder bridges or anything. <laughs> it is pouring down rain this morning. So right now it's almost 7 a.m. Dogly and I have been up since like 5. We get up early. And uh, the pouring rain, she goes out on the porch. She's like, mm-mm. So after three tries, <clears throat> excuse me, after three tries, she was finally like, oh, I really got to go. I guess I got to go outside. So <laughs> she finally went out. Cool. We got a bendy there. So let's see if we can't get our switch in next. Yep, no trouble at all. And since that's kind of just sitting there, use a little blue tack. And hold it in place. There we go. Sometimes it's hard to get the fingers working in the morning. These outside ones that are purely for structural support. They are going to take a second because they're going to conduct all the heat from your iron into the metal body of the switch. So you have to give them an extra second or two. 
All right, so here's our timing capacitor, and in this case, it is... Ten microfarads. So ten at ten microfarads, we're at five to fifty. Five hertz to no five five to five thousand, right? Yeah. Or fifty to five thousand. Anyway, we're at a maximum five kilohertz with this thing. So if we dropped it down to say a oh, one microfarad, that should, in theory, take us up to say 50 kilohertz. And you know, if we drop that down again to uh, 0 0.1, well, that should take us to a half a meg. So you can see it wouldn't be too difficult to modify this to make it do what you want. And for, you know, $8, I think that's a really neat platform to play with. So like I said, that's the reason I got this is a platform to play with. And a kit to build because well, frankly I love building kits. It's relaxing. Almost meditative. And it's all going together very nicely. So, I'm going to pull it out of here. Everything seems to be nice and lined up pretty well. Let's put on our main course adjust. You see pots like this that are made to go into a circuit board and for a lot of use. And some of the amplifiers that I fix, rebuild, whatever you want to call it, you'll see potentiometers like this a lot. Just gives them a little extra support. You want to make sure you put plenty of solder on these supports. Flow it in there. Because that is your main mechanical connection. And you want it to be solid. And that's that's pretty solid. I'm not I'm not stressing about that at all. So then we'll put on our input and output header. like so and maybe we'll even change the angle give you a different view so you're zoomed way in pardon me that's why everything was bumpy I'm gonna solder these guys up and we'll be just about done I'm trying to keep <laughs> perhaps this wasn't the best view that I have selected but it's not bad there we go so I have the soldering iron like parallel to the tabletop here which is an odd angle for me to solder from but hey just try and get you guys a nice view right yeah so that leaves us just two things left. Our LED, which is a little three millimeter jobber. And 
Make sure we put that in right. Long leg faces to the inside of the board there. soldered in place make sure she's sitting purdy which she's not but now she is get that last one up in there good deal all right everything is in but the bell of the ball. And I saved her for last because, you know, we don't want to do any damage. So the legs are still a little too wide. That's okay. We just move it down to the other end of this thing. Give it another squeeze. There we go, and we're in. Now what I'll do is just solder one leg real quick. Make sure everything is copacetic. Solder the opposite corner of the chip. And now it's in there, can't go anywhere. And now, we can solder her up. And I'm gonna add a little bit of flux here. Just a little, help keep things flowing, right? Let's just come drag down through here like this. The flux helps it not stick to the solder mask. It makes for a real smooth and efficient way to solder in ICs like that. I think I saw a bridge form on one of those. Yep, yeah, there's a bridge. Right there. Those two right there. So what I do is just come in here and reflow like that. Oh, now I move the bridge to the other side. There we go. Now is inspection time. Just want to make sure we don't have any bridges. All of our joints are soldered. Flowing smoothly. And we're ready to go. Well, it's the moment of truth. Everything is hooked up. So now we will connect our power, which is from the power supply. It needs a 12-volt uh, input. So you can see I've got it set for 12 volts, current limited to 200 milliamps. And powered on. Our LED is lit. There's no smoke. Bring in the scope. There's our 
ground. All right, so this is our sine wave. Hang on a second. All right, so there we are on sine wave. It is what, about 50 hertz? Let's move down to a triangle wave and square wave. Adjust the frequency. And that is just working out beautifully. Now the little switch on this board is frequency low, frequency high. So now we're at 460 hertz. Turn it all the way up so we can get just the old scope of matic here. And we're at 5 kilohertz on square. I thought this thing said it went up to 50. Doesn't matter. Like I said, you can always change the uh, timing capacitor. So, we have built ourselves a successful little signal generator. And this will be one of the great pieces that you want to have in your collection at home if you're starting out, you know, your own new electronics lab. Useful for testing out lots and lots of things. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up. There's my dirty thumb. <laughs> Don't forget to comment, share, and please subscribe if you haven't. I want to thank all the patrons. It's Patreon money that makes it possible to buy things like this and produce these videos. I couldn't be here without you guys. That's it. I'm out. Peace.